Welcome to Network Marketing Pro. My name is Eric Worre and I am privileged today to sit here with my friend, network marketing legend, incredible superstar, one of the most powerful women in the entire profession, Donna Johnson. How you doing, Donna? Hey, Eric, good to be here. Where did you come from in order to come, from, uh, come to Vegas? Just landed from Maui on a red eye and <laughs> unpacked, repacked, and came to Vegas. That's our wow, life. That's, that's how we life. roll. That's how we roll. <laughs> Um, well, ladies and gentlemen, Donna Johnson has um, been around the profession for a good period of time and I don't know how to say this, she's one of the sweetest spirits out there. Never heard anyone say a bad, mention a bad comment about this woman. Built a huge organization, she leads from the heart and I'm really proud and privileged to be able to just kind of have a conversation with you because, and I, and I also appreciate the fact that you're willing to give it, give it, pay it forward, give back to this profession that's given a lot to you. Um, why don't we start with, what's your background? You know, where, where'd you come from you know, prior to network marketing? Well, well, I'm a Packer fan. Yes, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> this is our longstanding thing. I'm a Minnesota Vikings fan. She's a Green Bay Packer fan. So, uh, um, it's a bitter rivalry, but that's about as far as it goes, as far as rivalry with us. So uh, yeah. you're a Packer fan. And uh, and that and means I'm from Wisconsin, okay. Wisconsin girl, a no college degree. And I have a disclaimer because I have been in the profession for 39 years, 29 wow. with my current company this year. And so I did start as a teenager. Wow. Literally, I did start as a teenager. So I uh, was a swimming coach and uh, just realized, you know, you don't, uh, you don't get into coaching for the money, you do it for the love of the kids. Uh, and so when I saw this opportunity, I really saw it as, an oppor uh, as a way to create that income that I desired. Interesting. So you've, you've been involved with uh, two companies over the course of your career, right? Yes. Yeah, so you, you were involved with one for, for a season, mm -hmm. and then that ended. And then for the last 29 years, you've been with, with one company and building that company up. Yes. Um, we don't talk about the names of companies for obvious reasons here at Network Marketing Pro, the, you know, companies and products, because what we're really looking for here is the common traits of the top earners. You know, what are the, what are the things that you start to hear over and over and over from top earners? You know, somebody makes 100000 a year, you'll hear lots of different things. Right. Somebody here makes a half a million a year, you'll hear less things, but it's still a little bit up and down. Once they're over a million dollars a year, you start to f find some very bedrock, fundamental, non-changing characteristics, right? Absolutely, for decades. Yeah. So what, what do you think defines you when it comes to um, your network marketing experience? You know, what, if, if people thought about you as a brand, you know, what, what, would, what comes to mind, the people who know you most and and, uh, and work with you? I would say commitment and never giving up. Uh, I love that you're doing this because I think it allows um, successful earners to um, share their hindsight for everyone else's foresight. And you know, I've got hundreds of six and seven figure income earners on my team and there would be more of them had people not quit. So what I love to share with people is that the only way you can fail is to quit. Just keep on going, even when it feels like you should have every reason to quit, just keep on going and because seasons change and things happen, life happens. Uh, just never give up because this profession is so amazing. Yeah, it's funny, I, I talked to a friend who uh, became an investor in Twitter. And the, reason, the way he became an early investor in Twitter before they went public is he became friends with their chief technology officer and the chief technology officer got his feelings hurt and decided he was going to leave. He wanted to sell all of his stock. <laughs> so my friend said, well, and he called my friend and said, would you like to buy my stock? And he said, like, you know, don't sell it all. Keep some. He said, nope, I'm done. I'm out. And he sold it all for a few million dollars. It would, would be worth between $1.6 and $2 billion Whoa. today. Now that's vision and commitment. <laughs> wow. So just, he, wow. he, was, he walked away from it uh, because he got his feelings hurt. Sometimes wow. that happens, right? Yeah. Inside of our profession, people get their feelings hurt. 
for whatever reason, and uh, and they let that get in the way of the opportunity. Do you yeah. see that happen? Oftentimes, people would rather be right than successful. Hmm. And so sometimes we have to get our ego out of the way and just do what's right. Yeah. So what do you think are the fundamental things? I mean, if you, if you picked one, two, or three things that you started with at the beginning, mm -hmm. you've done in the middle, and you still do today, what are those, what are those bedrock principles? Well, I love it. So much has changed with uh, technology, but a lot of the fundamentals have been the same. And the main one is just setting your goal and doing those daily activities. You know, in our profession, we love to say, when you love what you do, you'll never work another day in your life. And that's true, but you really have to work. You have to do what most people really are not willing to do when you say every work, day. When you say work, what does that mean? You have to you have to do your business. What does uh, that mean? But, you but you need to contact the people, see the people, show your product and business, um, help people become successful, build your team. Uh, it's kind of a circle of success. You mm -hmm. you just do those same things over and over. Uh, you know, some people might think it's a little unsexy. Oh, I want to do something different to go faster. And it's really the same things over and over. You just do them with more people as your business grows. So it's it's. Um, you know, when people are on stage getting recognition, where they really are not seen is behind, you know, closed doors, getting up in the morning, disciplining themselves. I always love to say that when you get up in the morning and look in the mirror, you're looking at the boss mm -hmm. and you can just put yourself right out of business. And so I've always been very, very tenacious. You can ask my husband, Thomas, uh, about my to-do lists mm -hmm. um, and make sure that they're revenue producing activities and just get done what you say you're gonna do. Uh, if, you, if most people would just follow through and do the things that they say they're gonna do, most people would be successful. So just the, the fundamentals of putting together people to talk to, contacting them, setting up appointments, sharing your product or opportunity, getting those people started, the, one, the ones that are willing, mm -hmm. and then moving them through that cycle. Like the pipeline of success, yes. Right. Yeah, uh, a lot of people, like you said, tend to get bored in network marketing. And so they're like, they, they want to graduate past that. <laughs> they do that, and then they say, no, no, no. Now I have a team, so my job is now to make sure the team does that. Instead well, of them do, continuing to do You it. do duplicate leadership, right. but the best activity to duplicate is uh, your own success. One of my favorite things to do in the business still is to launch a new business builder. And, uh, you know, we live in Sweden part-time, Wisconsin, Arizona, so it, with technology, it doesn't matter where I am, I can zoom in and, and just seeing the sparkle in that new person's eye uh, and helping them become successful. I think if you stay in touch with what it means to be that new person, um, that will always keep your love for the game. To, uh, talk to me more about the, the, the word launch. Some people would say, here's how to get somebody started, Mm -hmm. Here's how to uh, help a new person uh, uh, get their business going, but launch. Mm -hmm. Why do you use launch? Well, it makes me think of a rocket. You know, yeah. if you want to get that that business up into orbit, you need the majority of fuel at at takeoff, and so just really having them understand that they need to manage their expectations, uh, that um, it's not get, get rich quick, it's gonna take some time and to get some traction. Not everyone's gonna say yes. And if you don't talk about the truth with them, they, they go into the witness protection program where they're just missing. Right. And so I love to just share uh, all the ins and outs of the business as they get launched uh, so they know that it's a journey and attach yourself to my hip and we're gonna go lock arms and, and do this together. So is it, is it a lot of how-to or is it a lot of relationship building at the beginning? Both, really? absolutely Combination. both. Combination. Combination. Well, uh, you know, people make one of two mistakes. Uh, I call it the pendulum swim swinging. Some people just wanna jump in without any guidance uh, and, you know, really just make a lot of mistakes. Um, other people want to get their PhD in the profession mm -hmm. before they start. And what I share is that it's a combination of both. Um, so that as you're doing the business, you're learning and growing um, at each stage of the business. So, and goal setting is really important too, so that uh, they can really start to think about their dreams, their desires, their discontents, and what they want. And 
you know, have a vision board, um, you know, talk it through with their spouse and family, you know, put pictures on the refrigerator of where, of where they're going to go with the business and stay committed. When, you talk, when you're talking about um, what motivates people, uh, what, do you, what do you think motivates people at the beginning? Do you think it's starting their own business, recognition, money, um, camaraderie? A little bit of everything. Uh, there's so much um, opportunity in our profession. And when people learn about all the benefits and the friendships, the personal growth, the income, they just want it all, the community. Um, and I think it's very attractive. And if we can keep that alive in them, um, we can keep them engaged. Mm -hmm. And you know, keeping them in the business is the key because we know not everybody is going to follow through. There's right. going to be people that fall by the wayside. But I think the more you encourage them, plug them into things like GoPro, um, they understand that um, you have to think differently as an entrepreneur. It's not trading hours for dollars like people who have jobs. There's not a lot of support. Um, you know, sometimes there's more support for getting a part-time job at Starbucks than yes. building this business. And so more what training, I, yeah. more uh, expectations, the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, and, and just support from the people around them. And so when people say, gosh, I don't have a lot of support, I have a lot of dream stealers around me, I tell them two things. Number one, um, really be solid on your belief and commitment because people kind of um, step aside for the person who knows where they're going. Mm -hmm. And then show them success. You know, show them success, show them little baby steps. So how's it going? It's going awesome, it's going great. And then ask for the support. Like if mm -hmm. somebody is not supportive, maybe it's a spouse or a parent or a friend making fun of you, what are you doing, one of those? Um, just say, you know, it would mean the world to me if you would encourage me in my business because I have really big goals and, and share what those are. Maybe it's to get out of debt, put kids through school, whatever your goal is, share it from your heart and then ask for the support and you'd be surprised um, that you'll get what you ask for. Interesting. So talk to me about how many times is the person that you brought in the leader and how many times do they just lead you to the leader somewhere in the, in the organization? Oh, well, most of the time uh, you are sponsoring the person who is leading you to more of your leaders. So you have to remember that uh, when you're tapping into someone's uh, network, mm -hmm. um, it's like a ripple effect. Right. You know, they know people that you don't know and you just keep, you know, you just keep finding out more about that network. And with technology, we have so much more availability to that. Right. Well, the reason why I ask that is Sometimes people get involved in network marketing, they involve someone, and if that person doesn't succeed, they feel like they're a failure. If that person doesn't become a leader, they feel like they've let that person down. And that person might not be ready to be a leader. That's right. And, and your goal, your, your job, is either to mentor them to be a leader or to work with them to dig down until you find the person that identifies himself as a leader, and then you just go to work with them. And that person ends up benefiting that's right. You know, getting some benefit, but don't put so much pressure on yourself. Exactly. To, to make the person that you brought in, because it's it happens, but it's it's uh, it's more rare than it is standard. Mm -hmm. Well, and love them where they're at. I'm a big believer in crucial conversations. A lot of people like to run away. Oh my gosh, this this person has put their business on the back burner. You know they know they've put it on the back burner. They know you know that they've put it on the back burner, but nobody wants to talk about it. Mm. So what I love to do when I see someone going back burner, I love to say, you know what, Eric, um, when you first started your business, these are the things you told me that you wanted to do. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I've noticed that you've put your business on the back burner. So no shame, no stories. That's one of my mantras. Uh, I've noticed you put your business on the back burner. Has anything changed? in your original goals about what you wanted from this. Hmm. And they'll just be honest with you. Um, usually excuses come in threes. Do you want to know what it looks like? Sure. Okay. Uh, oh yes, this is harder than I thought and my, my daughter's getting married next month and my husband is sick. You know, one excuse is not enough. They usually go in threes. <laughs> okay. Uh, and, um, 
And when they do that, just love them where they're at and just say, you know what, I totally understand. And the beauty of this business is if that's where you want to be, you can be there. And I want you to know if anything changes and those goals start burning again inside of you, will you promise me that you will reach out to me because mm -hmm. I'm here to help you however you want to be supportive. And they love that. And oftentimes they'll, they'll think about that. They'll talk to their spouse and they'll come back, you know, a day or a week or a month or even a year later and say, you know what? thought about our conversation and I really do want more than just settling on the back burner. So don't be afraid to have those conversations, especially when you attach it to what they wanted, not right. what we wanted. You know, they wanted these goals. Has anything changed about that? Right. I think that's really smart. And as far as investing in the relationship. Yes. You're building trust and through that trust relationship, they have an opportunity to to save face and actually mm -hmm. come back to you and and uh, know that you care yep. without it being so heavy handed. Some people, you know, like, hey, when, you know, when, 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 when did you let go of your dreams? You know, kind of thing. And it's very accusatory. <laughs> shame. A little shame. A little shame based. Yeah. <laughs> right. Guilt based. You should feel guilty. Your kids are going to be needing this yeah. in the future. That kind of stuff. Um, talk to me about recognition. How, how important is recognition in the growth of your organization and, and, and in general in the growth of any network marketing organization? Huge. It's amazing how recognition drives people. Even people at the very top love to get recognized. It's, it's just part of how we're, you know, how we're built. And so never ever forget that part of it. And of course we build that into our culture. Uh, big time, and uh, it's it's one of the neat things about this profession, you know, is that recognition. A lot of people don't get appreciated in, yeah. in other areas of their life. And I heard a saying once, and I think it's true: if you find, if you have somebody in your organization that says, "I don't I don't need recognition," don't, don't forget about recognition. <laughs> you don't need to recognize me. Make sure that you recognize that person. <laughs> Because they 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 really really need it, uh, even absolutely. though they're not going to admit it. Yep, absolutely. Um, give me your thoughts on events. Uh, there's there's uh, a common theme with the top leaders when it comes to mm -hmm. events and and how they use events in order to be able to build belief, uh, grow their leadership, solve problems, deal with issues. Um, uh, how do how how have events helped you over the years? They're they're part of. Uh, the piece of success because events without activity doesn't work and activity without events doesn't work. The two have to go together and uh, when I see people in activity but not going to, to events, it creates a lid for their business. Mm -hmm. So we're excited about the events we're coming to yeah, yeah, <laughs> with yeah. you for sure, sure. Sure, Those are like in addition to what your company does. Yes. But in, inside of your company, mm -hmm. you, have a, you have an annual convention? Yeah, we have team events. And okay. then um, and leads, I have leadership events. That leads to events your leadership in, events in in my business, yep. in my organization, and uh, and then company events as well. So uh, they they really work together. So every and you then the go industry from events. event to event to event to yes. event to event, and then a, a portion of those will come to like a GoPro event or a, you know yes. most powerful women in network marketing event here and there. Um, but you know, for everybody that's watching this, if you ever have to decide between one or the other, go to your company events always go to your company events. That's where you're gonna get your oxygen. That's where you're gonna have your breakthroughs. That's where you're gonna build your belief. What the, the, the profession events, like what we do, are designed to show you a bigger picture and maybe a, a little bit more focused, in-depth training from a broader spectrum of people, but it's not meant to replace what your company does. Um, the, uh, do, you, do you ever do contests and incentives with your, with your team outside of what the company does? Uh, we do. Um, we don't over, um, uh, overdo promotions because the company has them. Mm. And I believe the compensation plan on its own is sure. a great driver. Uh, but it's fun just to mix things up once in a while. But I always tell people, make sure that it's um, money appropriate, you know, that you're doing things that are in line, uh, mm -hmm. that match the incentive. Mm -hmm. Um, do you teach people to do home parties, or do well, they do hotel meetings, or do they do coffee shops? A little shop, bit of everything. One -on -one? <laughs> is, there, um, is there a dominant thing? One-on-one uh, -on -one and group presentations, I would say, dominate, um, because what our goal is to tell a story about the product and business and find the fit. You know, mm -hmm. some people talk about lead with opportunity, lead with the product. I believe in leading bo with both, mm -hmm. because that's when we can explore what is the best fit for them. If they want to earn an income, join our team. If they're not interested in that, but do they just want to use great product, um, look at our customer opportunities. So we have a really nice 
defined difference between our customer base and our um, consultant base. Got it. What do you think makes you different? Why are you so special? <laughs> I don't think I am, actually. Uh, I think the compensation uh, plan, uh, <laughs> the, the commission check readout would differ with your conversation. I think you're humble and I think you're, you're a, a nice person. But I, there's a lot of humble, nice people that aren't yeah. earning big money. There's something, and I really want to dig into this, for real. Not just the stuff that sounds fancy from the stage, but for real. What is the difference between you and somebody, if, you, if you've had to have thought about it, <laughs> but, and somebody who's not fulfilling their potential? Well, What's the difference? I think first um, that I'm relatable. I think that um, it's believable and achievable what I present with people, speaking the truth. Um, hype is not really necessary when our opportunity is amazing on its own. Uh, but I think um, I just have a really strong work ethic. Um, I I'm a planner. I have a lot of energy. Uh, and so I kind of compartmentalize my life. You know, I think we were talking about one of my posts where someone had said, gosh, you guys go on vacation a lot. And I'm like, well, no, that's actually our life. You know, this is we're living life. Yeah. And even when we're traveling, we can we can do our business. And that's what's so cool about this business. And I think that I do a really good job of managing my time um, and making that time productive. How consistent are you? Um, very consistent. So, um, Do you think you're more consistent than than? Uh, I'm many? probably, I would say that I'm, I'm I Is would that be one a of the attributes I would that, be that you're proud in of? the Hall of Fame for consistency. For consistency. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that, that's what I'm trying to get like at. Like the ever ready bunny. I, I, that's what I get I have at. people come up to me know, all the you, time. You're, you you're could all, just retire right. while you're out there working. Because you're helping people. And I love it. Right. So that's why I'm trying to get beyond just the general stuff. Your work, if you'd be in the Hall of Fame for work ethic, I think that's a common attribute for top earners. So, some people, you know what they've been trained? That the word work equals pain. <laughs> the word work equals something that you want to get over with. Right. Be done with, right? Yeah. Versus something you want to explore, something that you want to invest in, mm -hmm. right? So it's a different, it's a change in mindset, right? It really is, because what we do is helping so many people. And uh, so it, it, what I think it, what drives us, it, what's, what keeps us motivated. So work ethic is one. Consistency. You'd, you'd be in the top of the top when it comes to consistency. You don't let these spaces grow in between. You, you make sure you're staying in touch. You make sure you're, you've got your connections. You make sure that you're, bringing in new people and launching business to show people by example, even though you could go, you know, sit on a beach for the rest of your life, <laughs> you're not doing it because you're not driven by the money anymore. You're driven by contribution now, right? Yeah. And no, so sure, there might be some competition, <laughs> right? There's always going to be some competition. Sure. But what I've seen over and over with top earners is two things drive them, growth and contribution. Absolutely. If they're growing, they're happy. Yeah. And if they're contributing, they're happy. And they just want to contribute a little bit more tomorrow than they did today, and that makes them happy. And when they stop growing, even if they have money, and when they stop contributing, even if they have money, they stop being happy. Is it's the, true. Is the, have you seen that also? Absolutely. And one of the most fulfilling things for me is to watch, you know, the leaders in my organization uh, follow our, kind of our, culture of giving back and you know we've got five orphanages uh, nice. one of my leaders is, is in guatemala right now for an orphanage that she has funded uh, and just to see um, them growing into their greatness mm. is pretty cool especially when you know you had something to do with them coming into the business or you've been able to yeah. watch their growth it's pretty spectacular i don't know any other profession uh, where we get to enjoy that yeah Talk about all the other top earners that I talk to. They always they always talk about one other thing that uh, is a centerpiece for their lives and for their organizations, and that's personal development. That personal development, this idea of you get to make what you are as a person. If you want to make more, you need to become more. And this environment inside of network marketing allows people the space and the encouragement to grow themselves personally. How important is personal development in your life and in your organization's success? Well, it's foundational because um, it's 
it creates a lid on your business when you're not growing personally and you never arrive. Um, you know, this is 2016. Thomas and I are just ferocious readers and learners and uh, taking different classes and courses and, and sharing that. And we love sharing it with our organization as well. So um, when I see people uh, not growing personally, um, I watch them kind of slow down their, in their business. Yeah. Well, here's what I'd like you to do. Uh, all of this is awesome and amazing. <laughs> what I'd like you to do is the audience that's watching or listening right now, these are people who, they want what you have. I want what she's having, right? They, they're, they want, they might not know how to get there. And I want you to pretend like you have a brand new person that you're launching in a living room. It's just you and that person. No pressure. <laughs> no, it's just you and that person, just like you've done a million times. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they, they might have had success before. Maybe they had failure. Maybe they had disappointment. Maybe, maybe they have got self-doubts. Maybe they, they don't have a great support system around them. Maybe they have good support system. Whatever it is. What, what would you, I want you to just look in the camera and one-on-one, and -on -one, pretend that yeah. camera is, is the person that's sitting on the other side watching this right now. Yeah. What would you share with them about uh, this journey in network marketing and what advice would you have for them as they move forward? Okay. Well, I would say that you were attracted to this business for a reason and really build on that. Just don't stick your toe in the water. And you know, we hear so often people say, well, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Just go all in and believe in yourself. What is it that you want from this uh, business? And don't compare yourself to other people uh, because that's so often what we do. And listen to your upline and be coachable. Just attach yourself and um, never give up. So have a long-term plan. Um, we call it having binoculars and a magnifying glass. So have long-term vision for where you want to be and see yourself there and put pictures around the house and tell people this is where we're going. People just think you're nuts, but you know what? They'll, they'll uh, think you're nuts when you're successful and, and driving the car and, and, and giving back. So have that long-range vision and then have that short-term magnifying glass right in front of you for the task at hand because what you've got to do is you've got to get in activity. Don't let anyone tell you that there's an easy way around it. You have to get in front of people and do the things. You have to fill your calendar. Uh, you have to pick up the phone. You have to do those things that, you know, you, sometimes we have that little itty bitty shitty committee <laughs> on our shoulders saying, oh, you don't have to do that. But guess what? You do have to do that. So set your goals uh, and, and be accountable with someone, um, your upline, a coach, and just never, ever give up. The only way that you can fail is to give up. Well, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed this time. Donna, thank you so much. Uh, you could <laughs> be you, doing Aaron. a lot of things right now, but the fact that you came here to be able to spend some time and share some ideas with the people out there, I hope um, the right person out there got the inspiration that they were supposed to get uh, from this time together. Great. We both enjoy paying it forward. We both enjoy contributing to the profession. And uh, we hope that the right people were watching and they're ready to take their step into greatness. Thank you, Eric. And thank you for what you and Marina are doing as well. We're excited to be a part of it. Well, together we're doing important work. You too. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our wish for all of you is that you decide to become a network marketing professional that you decide to go pro. Because it is a stone cold fact that we do have a better way. Now let's go tell the world. Everybody have a great day, and we'll see you next time. Take care, bye-bye.